Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiast right off the bat on today's show. The Viper is back in the news. Now when I first saw this story break, I really looked at it and went, yeah right, this isn't really ever going to happen. And the deal is this, Car and Driver is claiming that the Viper is going to return very soon. In fact, their exact words were, trust us, this is happening. Now the trick of this deal is, or at least what they're claiming, is that Viper is going to return. FCA is basically going to resurrect the Viper after it's been out of production for a couple of years. Of course, the inner car guy in me is leaping for joy, saying hallelujah. It's going to be beautiful to see a brand new Viper. And then the inner realist inside of me comes out and goes, why? Why would they ever do this? FCA is a company that doesn't have a whole lot of cash at their disposal, even though they've had some very good numbers over the past several months. But the trick is they've completely redone the Wrangler, which is going to bring back the money that they've spent on that new Wrangler tenfold. They've also redone the new Ram pickup truck, which is going to bring back that money tenfold. The Viper, on the other hand, chances are will never pay for its tooling. So why would you actually bring out this automobile other than the sheer fact to claim that you have a Halo car? But why wouldn't you just call the Demon the Halo car, even though you're only building a handful of those machines and the bulk of them are already sold? So here's the trick. Can this vehicle actually exist in this modern day? Sure it can. You can think of back maybe at the Alpha 8C platform, which is probably still laying around at FCA's disposal, that they could actually just slip in that 6.2 liter supercharged V8 inside of it into a vehicle that's a lot more slippery and a lot more lightweight than the vehicles such as the Challenger and Charger that are Hellcat versions that already exist. Again, this is kind of a situation where it's a wait and see deal. I don't exactly believe this deal's going down. We haven't heard FCA actually come out and approve of this particular message, so if they come out and say it, I'll definitely come out and say, you know what, I was wrong that this vehicle is going to return, but if it was my best guess, I don't think you'll ever, ever see the Viper ever again. Next up on the list, the Raptor gets some big upgrades. The folks over at the Ford Motor Company hooking up with the folks over at Fox Shocks to develop some brand new adaptive dampers to go on all four corners. And it's going to help to control the ride over rough surfaces, especially at high speeds. In fact, one of its biggest little tricks is going to be when the vehicle's at full droop, meaning it's at full drop, 13 inches of up and down travel up front and 13.9 inches out back. Full droop, meaning the vehicle's basically off the ground. The suspension and the dampers will be able to adapt to this, putting it in their stiffest settings to allow the vehicle to land without actually bottoming out. It's also got a couple of more tricks up its sleeve. It's got a brand new thing called trail control, which is basically a crawler mode inside of the vehicle that's electronic for any speeds under 20 miles an hour to help the vehicle manage very rough terrain at a very even keel. But they're also going to help out the folks inside of the machines, the operators themselves, with brand new Recaro seats. Definitely something that I thought the Raptor should have had all along was some better seating options for up front. Here's the trick. A lot of early adopters to the old Raptor have got to be listening to this story, reading it online, thinking, ah, oh, jeez. And i got to head back to the Ford dealership to get the updated version of that deal. But it does mean that some of those non-updated machines may be getting a lot less expensive coming very soon in the used car market. Next up on the list, kind of a sad situation, at least as far as I'm concerned. I'm a big fan of Chris Meek. Chris Meek's a hell of a rally driver, but he has had a fair amount of problems adapting to the C3 from Citroen. Now, if you haven't heard this particular story, it was an odd situation for me. I happened to be off the day that Chris Meek and Paul Neagle were actually relieved of their duties, effective immediately by the folks over at Citroen. I was factually just getting caught up with the Rally Portugal, thanks to the old folks over at Red Bull TV. Been spending a lot of time with motor cars over in Indianapolis. You may have been checking out the videos I've been posting all this week. So I didn't have time to see what the Portugal rally actually took place. But Mr. Meek and Mr. Neagle actually had a heck of an off. 
In fact, the cage did not react well for this particular incident, which is probably more of a miracle that Chris Meek and Paul Nagel were, came out very unscathed. Now, during that situation, roll cages are basically made to help keep the occupants okay inside of crashes. The trick is a lot of race cars are designed to hit walls or solid things, but not active pieces of the landscape, much like trees, where they actually spit this vehicle off into. But the real deal is this. Citroen basically relieved Chris Meek and Paul Neagle, but there's a little side story to this deal. When I first found out about this situation, I checked out on Twitter where Citroen made the announcement. And when I saw it, it was six hours old, that announcement was. But... If you headed to the Facebook page of Chris Meek, he made an announcement just five hours before me reading that particular situation, meaning that Citroen announced on Twitter that they were releasing Chris Meek and Paul Neagle before they even told these guys, because the post on Facebook that Chris Meek actually said was a little bit more about the apologies to the crew over the crash over the weekend, but was definitely looking forward to the test sessions they had for the Sardin Sardinia round in the World Rally Championship. So this is kind of a weird situation. Not to say that this hasn't happened before. A lot of you may know in the Formula One world, one Will Buxton, who's now working for Formula One, he was doing USA coverage of Formula One on Speed Channel and NBCSN. But when Speed actually dropped Formula One coverage, poor Will Buxton found out via Twitter as well before anybody told him that his services were no longer needed. So it's kind of a weird situation that Citroen actually did this particular deal, at least in the way they did. Chris Meek and Paul Neagle actually had to see the writing on the wall with Andres Mikkelsen coming on board, and even this weekend, or last weekend, I guess I should say, in Portugal, of Mads Osberg coming in as well. Chances are I'm thinking Mads Osberg is going to slip right into Chris Meek's car for the rest of the season, but we'll have to wait and see on that front. I'm sure Chris Meek, with his talents, are going to end up somewhere possibly next year, maybe with Toyota, maybe with Hyundai, possibly with Ford, because I'm really thinking that Ford fit probably is the best one, because I'm assuming that Sebastian Ogier will not be making his return to M Sport without he wants to really go to a factory outfit, which M Sport is not. It's more of a customer team. So I'm assuming that's where Chris may end up, but we'll have to wait and see on that front. And last up on the list, Annika Patrick just finished up her last race, maybe, of her entire career. The Indianapolis 500, sadly, she went out in a crash on lap 68 of 200 of the greatest spectacle in racing at the 102nd running of the Indianapolis 500. Not something that probably was 100% her fault. There was a lot of big name drivers that had the same issues. These cars were very sketchy at the limit, had a very narrow tuning window for them as well. So when she actually crashed out, it wasn't hugely surprising, not because of her talents. It's really just basically because she didn't have a whole lot of time in this car, especially with this sort of downforce setting. So kind of a sad ending. Would have loved to have seen her. She had one of the better cars in the front half of May, especially at the circle track version of the Indianapolis 500, not the Grand Prix that happened a couple of weeks ago. So, sad ending. Hopefully she may end up going with a man, maybe going to the mall or something like that. I'm just spitballing. Maybe Australian supercars or DTM or something like that. I would love to see her get into something else. And it may be, she may be done forever. We'll have to wait and see on those fronts. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Don't forget to like us over on the Facebook page. Link's down in the show notes. You can check out all our Meekum goodies that are up there right now. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time. You get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.